y'all we got more action coming so i probably should tell people a lot about myself what did i tell you about that podcast the other day <laughs> trying to have me on a podcast is like trying to herd chickens in a tornado so i'm tim palmer with buck and obsessed and some of you may recognize me because i've had way too many people walk up to me and be like dude you're that guy that missed that giant because I took the footage of missing the biggest buck of my life and I put it on TikTok and then kind of went viral. And that's kind of why I wanted to make this video in the first place was to kind of tell the whole story of what really happened because I had so many people reach out or comment on that video wanting to know the real story. So here it is. For me, hunting has always been just a huge family tradition. Uh, my grandfathers, both of them, were h big hunters, but my dad's dad in particular was a phenomenal archer. He killed several really, really big deer with his bow, did a lot of traditional hunting as well. And uh, for me, it was just like as a kid, that's who I looked up to. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to, he was a cowboy and a hunter, and I wanted to be both. As kids, we grew up watching monster bucks, watching the Drury's, watching that was like we didn't watch a lot of TV so f watching hunting videos was what we did. And Michael Waddell came out with Realtree Road Trips. Shout out to Michael Waddell. Um, that was just a whole different kind of hunting show. That was his tagline and it was outstanding. I loved the journey. I loved seeing the behind the scenes, all that. And so even when I was like 12, 13, 14 years old, I was taking my mom's video camera out in the woods and filming hunts, filming dang near every deer I ever killed I I filmed and I loved it when I turned 18 I actually became a professional rodeo cowboy and I rode bareback horses in the PRCA and traveled all over the US Canada competing and so hunting kind of became on the back burner it was something that I did maybe five six seven ten days a year uh, but I didn't really have the time to put much into it I mean, every chance I got, I was still in the woods, but I was on the road so much, I never really had a chance to put a lot into it. I just had too much stuff going on. In 2019, my dad had told me about this property of a past friend that had actually passed away that had a property in Indiana. So we ended up calling this man's wife, and she was like, absolutely, he would love that if you guys we're hunting the property. So that November, we decided to go out there. We had never really been on the property. Looked at the maps that first morning. I went packing down in there with a climber, went up this tree, set up my little camera. I had bought a GoPro because I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And right after daylight, all of a sudden I seen some does, heard a couple grunts, and I was like, oh wow, this is cool. And I looked up and there's just this big old rack standing in the woods and I was like, all right, this is, this is getting cool real fast. And, uh, I did like they did on the, on the shows and I got out my grunt call and I grunted at him a couple times. I mean, sure enough, boom, on a rope to 20 yards, buck comes right in. I'm filming him. I'm like, oh my gosh, here I am. I'm, I'm filming this big buck and I shot him and it was my first ever Pope and Young Whitetail. It was, it was an amazing moment in my life. My dad came over, he was pumped. Then I realized, I'm like, oh my gosh, we're here for like six more days and I'm already tagged out, so I can just film my dad. So I wound up hunting with my dad. We hunted our butts off. And I think on the fourth day, we had an encounter one morning. We looked up on this little hillside and we saw this giant rack buck standing up there. So we got up there, we hung our climbers in the trees. And we're like, the next morning, we're going to go in and we're going to sit up there. Maybe that's a good area. And we didn't even realize it, but it was a giant CRP field up on this bench. And the next morning, we woke up really early, 
got up in there before daylight and we hardly saw a deer all morning until like around 11 o'clock and all of a sudden I looked out in the CRP and I just see this doe bounding through the through the CRP and I'm like dad here comes a doe you know whatever and I mean behind her there was just something I had never seen before like just a magnum running behind her and I was like big buck big buck you know like freaking out I'm shaking so bad trying to get my dad you know ready to hopefully shoot this deer and this buck was the buck that we call bow tie. He wound up coming in to 35 yards on us that day and he was there for probably 10 minutes and then wound up moving off. But that was a pivotal moment, I would say, in my hunting career, encountering an animal that big and just being like, wow, that was something like I'd never seen before. And it really started a fire in me to go chase big bucks. We wound up on the next to last day, my dad and I got in this bottom, sat all day, had a bunch of activity, and sure enough, 4.30 in the afternoon, I hear a grunt and this looked over and here just comes big rack running through the woods chasing a couple does and came right into 18 yards and dad absolutely hammered him, freaking out. Like, again, we just killed two Pope and Young bucks in six days on a property we had never been before. And it was like such a high and watching my dad do that sparked another fire in me for really diving off more into filming and producing hunting videos because that was even a better high a, a, a bigger moment for me in my career of hunting than even killing my first Pope and Young. Seeing my dad experience that was just awesome. So after that trip, that was November, um, I wound up having a pretty bad injury at the IFR um, rodeo finals in Oklahoma in 2020, January of 2020, and I wound up hurting my back pretty good, an injury that I'd kind of had for several years but had gotten away with it, and then COVID hit, and I wound up making the decision to retire from rodeo, and that was really a tough time for me. I really didn't know what to do with my life at that point because I'd been so involved in rodeo and traveling and just obsessed with that that I kind of had to hit the reset button. I was like, you know what, I need something to chase. And so I really just dove off into learning everything that I possibly could about whitetail hunting and learning, reading, watching every video I could, trying to learn as much as I could so that the next time we had an opportunity at a big buck like Bowtie, that we would have a chance of killing him. Going into 2020 fall, we were just, I mean, Dad and I were texting back and forth all the time. We wound up getting our bucks in the mail from the taxidermist, and it was just like, man, we cannot wait for the moment when we're heading back to Indiana. And... Over that year, I had um, hired JMO. My uh, he works for me with my tree service, and then we wound up filming a ton of fishing videos and stuff that year. And so I decided, you know what, I'm gonna self film, and then I'm gonna have JMO come and film my dad. So the three of us went to Indiana that November. When we got there, I was like, you know what, the reason we didn't kill Bowtie that year, the year before was because of where we were set up. And I thought, you know what, if we can get up there, I need to get, there's one tree I could get in in the middle of that CRP patch that I could be able to hang a stand. And so we went in there, when we first got there, it was, it was freaking hot, it was like 80 degrees. And I went straight to that field where I, I had seen that buck the year before. And I hung a hang on stand one of the things I had learned from all my studying over the year was that a lot of times big mature bucks will access the same area or use the same area, come back for the same does, whatever. And so I was like, you know what? If he shows up back in this field, I'm going to be ready. Two days later, the weather went from being like highs in the 70s to like 40 degrees. And I was like, dang, this is the perfect opportunity. I'm going to go sit in that stand. And it was November 11th, 
which was the exact day we had encountered bow tie the year before in that same field. So we went up, I went up in there and around 11 o'clock, like you can't even script this story, the exact time, the exact date, a year later, I'm sitting on that in that tree and I, I saw some does running and I was like, no freaking way. And I looked up and truthfully Bowtie had gone from like a big buck to a giant. He had blown up from 150 inch deer to close to 200 inches. Sure enough, this buck circles around, comes right in. And I've got my cameras rolling. I wound up ranging him. And just as I ranged him as he was walking in, he was at 40 yards. In the hurry of self-filming, I did not re-range him. I thought he was still at 40 yards. In reality, he had started to walk a little closer. And turns out he was 35 yards. I watched the biggest buck I had ever seen run off down into the bottom without me killing him. The feeling that hit, I was rock solid till I shot. And when I shot, I lost it. I can't even pull myself together right now. I'm shaking so bad. I just missed Bowtie. I missed him at 35 yards. I shot right over his back. I can't stop shaking. Oh my God, you guys. He's a giant. My entire body was just convulsing. It was such an adrenaline rush. And I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe, A, that I saw him again, B, that I was able to take a shot at him, and then C, that I had completely muffed the shot and missed him at 35 yards because I thought he was a 40. And I can sit here and make excuses all day long. Oh, if I wouldn't have been self-filming, I would have rearranged him. But at the end of the day, it just wasn't meant to be. There's a lot of things I would change, but I think the biggest part was I just took it way too seriously. And my dad ended up later that day actually shooting a nice buck. He, was, he couldn't stay very long. My mom had had knee surgery, so he only had a few days to hunt. A nice buck came through. Jamal was able to capture him, killing that buck, which again was an awesome experience, and I was so happy for him. But even in the moment, I was just so pissed off at myself that I couldn't even enjoy that moment with him because I was just so numb from the whole experience with Bowtie. Guess it's time to regroup. Good job, hey. Pop. Good job, Jamo, on the camera. Been a ton of fun, guys, as always. The, yeah. the memories and the experience are the trophy. And uh, oh, yeah. so today was a good one. I'll, now you go out there and deck bow tie tomorrow, and that'll that'll complete the week. That would uh, that would make it real special. Yeah, so. it would make it real special. <laughs> I don't like real with so a I capital get out of this, R. I can get out of this depression I'm in right now. I just ordered You'll two large like, pizzas. I have a pizza. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll see you later. See you, Jamo. Thanks for the help. You bet. Good job, and, guys. Uh, awesome job. Can't wait till the next time. Yeah. Yep. Peace. All righty. Don't miss, guys. I do love bow hunting. Don't miss. Deer. This is getting fun. Yeah, I love bow hunting too. I love it.
During that 2020 summer, a buddy of mine had given me a Whitetail Adrenaline DVD, which was a whole new style of hunting. And I was like, dang, like these dudes are out here spotting and stalking and killing giant bucks. And this is just amazing. And they were the closest group of dudes I'd ever seen to like rodeo cowboys, just running around, ripping in a minivan, wide open, just living it, you know? And I loved it. I was, I was big time fan of that. So then once my dad had killed his buck, now I had a cameraman and I was like, heck yeah, dude, we're going to ground and pound this till I kill something. The last day, wound up sneaking in on this buck, bedded with a doe, giant buck, you know, really nice mature deer, and crawled in there, laid there for seven hours, buck finally stands up when another little buck came in and tried to steal his doe. He comes into 30 yards, and I couldn't get drawn on him because his doe was at 18 yards, wound up making a marginable shot on this deer and ended up shooting him twice and he was walking on the second shot and I couldn't stop him and I just shot to get a second arrow in him and I actually hit his femoral artery and he went right down and it was one of the coolest you know from the lowest of lows of missing a potential 200 to then killing my biggest buck ever you know, a giant mature deer off the ground, that opened an entire new can of worms for me. I think what that whole trip taught me was, you know, that perseverance pays off, first of all. It gave me a new addiction to crawling and brawling with big bucks on the ground. And I think the biggest thing that I drew from missing that buck, that giant buck, was the fact that I wasn't ready to kill that deer. Because I'm telling you, if I would have killed that deer, literally two years into hunting seriously, my head would have gone through the roof. And that was the most humbling experience ever. Like, for me to miss that deer, obviously people watched the video, I wound up, you know, getting even some hate comments about how I killed the buck that I did because it was a marginal, marginal shot, but it worked. And I think it was just a reality check because if I would have killed that buck, if I would have killed Bowtie that year, my head would have gone way out of proportion. I would have become way too, it's all about me. And I realized through that, now, at the time I was just pissed, <laughs> but now... I've realized that I was not ready to kill that caliber of deer. Here we are, three years later, getting ready for another fall. The industry is going to tell you, grind it out, you only are cool if you kill big bucks. You're only going to be cool or you're going to get sponsors or you're going to work with big people in the industry if you are this guy. And guys, there is so much more life than shooting big deer. There's people that shoot big deer that let it go to their head as I would have in that situation. And I think one of the biggest things, and it's why my channel is called Buckin' Obsessed. Because yes, I'm Buckin' Obsessed with the outdoors. I'm obsessed with hunting whitetails, but also the things that mean way more than if I kill 20 200 inch bucks is being Buckin' Obsessed with my family, being Buckin' Obsessed with my wife, with making memories with my friends, prioritizing those things and just having fun in life y'all there's so many people that go through life that never have a passion never have something they're obsessed with they just wake up go to work do this do that do this and they they're never truly living they're just reacting to what life gives them and now it's become an obsession of mine to be an inspiration to other people to live outside the box if you're not obsessed with the things in your life if if you don't wake up in the morning excited to go do what you're doing then reprioritize guys go out there find something that you love even if it's roller skating man just go out there and enjoy it and going into this fall i hope i kill a magnum buck 
and I'm excited to see where this season goes. God's put so many amazing people in my life and new friends that I've met through the hunting industry. This past fall I was able to really connect with the guys from Whitetail Adrenaline and now they're some of my closest friends that I talk to on the daily and maybe one day we'll get to hunt with them on a show that inspired me to chase my dreams. So I guess all wrapped up, yeah, that day, November 11th, 2020, potentially the biggest buck I'll ever have a chance at walked out of my life. But when I look at the story that has come from it and the journey that I've gone through since then, I wouldn't trade it because it taught me more and that means more to me than what having that big buck on my wall would. So, go out there guys, live your life, be bucking obsessed with everything you're doing, keep your priorities straight, and just have fun. Because if you ain't having fun, you're doing it wrong.